The Mercedes SLC has plenty of pose value on the outside, but does it feel as stylish from the driver's seat? Well, yeah, kind of. The SLC has the same interior design as the SLK, which came out back in 2011, so it is actually starting to look a bit dated. There's so many buttons on the dash that it's hard to keep count. The build quality is good though, and the upgraded brown Nappa leather of this car feels lovely and soft. There's only two trim levels to choose from. The four-cylinder petrol SLCs all come in AMG line trim. Or if you want more drama and speed, there's a twin-turbo V6 petrol in the AMG 43. All AMG line models get plenty of kit as standard, including alloy wheels measuring 18 inches or more, sport suspension, cruise control, air conditioning, and the SL's party piece, that metal folding roof. There's a few optional extras worth going for. The 400-pound air scarf system blows hot air onto your neck from the seat backs and it's great when you want to roll with the roof down on a cold day. It's also worth upgrading to the command online system. The 7-inch display comes with 3D mapping, live traffic information, voice control and traffic sign recognition. However, even though it costs a whopping £2,000, it still isn't the latest version of Mercedes infotainment system. But that's not all bad, because it means that it doesn't have the annoying floating touchpad that you get in the E-Class. The click wheel and physical shortcut buttons are much easier to use. It's just a shame that the software isn't so slick. Compared to the system in an Audi TT, the menu layout manages to make even simple tasks seem a bit complicated. The same goes for the graphics. They look decent, but aren't as pretty as those in the Audi. At least the address input for the navigation system is fairly easy, and loading times are okay. It's a bit of a faff to enter a fuel station as a waypoint though, because you need to go through quite a few menus to confirm a route change. A DAB digital radio is standard on every SLC, and flicking through the stations is straightforward, but you don't get the fancy channel icons you get on some rival systems. Once your device's Bluetooth connection has paired, it reconnects reliably each time you start the car. You can skip tracks or change stations using the buttons on the steering wheel, but only if the main screen is one of the media menus. So if you want to use a sat-nav while listening to music, those buttons to skip tracks don't work. It's very annoying. If you really love your tunes, you can upgrade to a 10-speaker Harman Kardon Hi-Fi. It's much better than the regular system, and it's punchy enough to make up for the extra wind noise you get when you take the roof down. Overall, then, the SLC's interior is quite nice, but it is starting to show its age. If a gorgeous design and a slick infotainment system is what matters most, then an Audi TT Roadster is a better choice.